Coming up on Help I Sexted My Boss... It's our Valentine's Day spesh. So love is in the air every time I look around. And we've got a bouquet full of your problems and dilemmas that are romance-themed. Like what to do if your date doesn't know how to use a knife and fork. And if your new partner likes licking, but not in a good way. And to a lesser extent, it's Jordan's birthday, and I've got some surprise packages for him. Hello, and welcome to Help I Sexed My Boss, the Valentine's Day special. This is the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of love life. Of, oh. your, love, of your love life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to everyday dilemmas. Like, shall I buy my Valentine a trendy cape this year? Oh, yes, they're all the rage. <laughs> Where is your cape? What's it? More on that in a minute. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you do if your date starts playing Dixon Dallas to set the mood? <laughs> Open up. <laughs> <laughs> and what should you do if you've accidentally sexed your boss? But we're not usual agony ants. Are we William Hansen, the UK's <laughs> leading etiquette expert? No, we're not Jordan North Radio presenter. I'm more getting down on one knee. <laughs> You're more getting down on both knees. It's from Jacob and Leeds. I don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that. Oh, shut up. Well, I don't. What's getting down on one knee? Oh, Getting down on one knee is to propose. Yeah, getting down on two knees. I'll show you after. Jacob in Leeds, you little shit. <laughs> Shall we do a toast? Yes, let's have a toast. Now. Oh, can tell it's Valentine's <laughs> week. We're going to toast. It is Valentine's week, but is it also <coughs> Oof. Jordan's birthday tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, God. Ooh, please. It's my birthday. I want to remember it. Tomorrow. So, Jordan, obviously, you don't drink a toast yourself. Not good etiquette, but Jordan. Put the gla- I meant to put the glass down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That'll put hairs on your chest. Oh, that'll put hairs on your chest. Won't put hairs on your back, of course. No, it won't. Because you've had them all lasered off. I finished my last laser therapy treatment. Yes. Oh, it was sore towards the end. It was like getting a tattoo. Was it? Yeah, it was It was agony. To the point where I had to get my coat and bite down on it. Because mm. it was little th- fine white hairs. Said. I thought they were meant to be quite easy to, to remove. No, but I'm, dark I'm so impressed with the results. So yes. I'll show you after this. You can stuff a mattress with what's come off. You probably could, actually. Yeah. Oh, honestly. Yeah, and, I've, and I am... I can only apologise to the owners of Veet because you're going to see a lot less sales <laughs> over the next couple of years because this guy doesn't need to Veet anymore. You do have to go and have it topped up, you know. That's not going to last you for life. Do you, they've mentioned that. What, one, like once, two a year, maybe. Is that it? Mm. That, uh, that's fine. Depends, depends on everyone's hair growth is different. I can cope with that. I yeah. can cope with that. I remember once my mum used a, a scourer to Veet me. You know, a scourer? One of those green scourers. What's it normally used on? Because, you know, you get a scraper with Veet. We've talked about this many a times. Mm. You get a scraper with Veet. They give you a little plastic scraper. We used to always use it. So once you did it with a scourer and my dad's blockbuster card <laughs> that were in, like, messy draw. From Red Raw for weeks. <laughs> and then she did you back. Um, let's... <laughs> That's weird. That's so laugh. No, I know. I know it's weird. Um, I noticed, I think when we... I think you fall into this category of people, and I apologise if you do. But when we came around for New Year, and I needed some ice, Mm. you had a bag of ice, as in you've gone out and bought ice. Yeah. You're throwing money up the wall. You're buying ice. Yeah. Have you got a tap? I've got, I've even got, yes. You've got a tap, you get some ice trays... You make your no, own ice. because then the bloody water goes everywhere and it freezes. You have no, to... it doesn't. Do you know I've also got a freezer that makes ice? You... And yet you go and buy ice. Because my biggest worry is running out of ice. And we had we needed ice for the ice bucket. We need ice for the drinks. We Yeah. We've got a full tray of ice that the fridge makes, but I always get extra ice in it. I well. think people that buy ice are psychopaths. No, they're not, especially in the summer. No, make, just make more ice. You can make two lots of ice a day. Do you know what I love doing as well? Buying a bag of ice and then dropping it on the floor and it all breaks up. Top tip for you there. No, but you see, I think it's nicer in... I got for Christmas, I got some big ice cube moulds. Oh, they go ev- oh, I got that. Yeah. yeah. I might... Do you know what? I might buy some of them, actually. I, oh, it's too late. We could have got you some for your birthday. Ice cube 
molds. The big ones, because I think there's something to do. My brother James was telling me that if it, the ice has a bigger surface area or something, it doesn't dilute the drink as yeah. much, but it keeps it cold or blah, 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 blah. It's good for old fashioned. It's when the ice is really small. I'm going to get that. If it's crushed ice, that's actually really bad for drinks because it dilutes the drink so quickly because it melts ice much quicker. Molds and vanish stain remover. I need to order that. What stains are you trying to get out? Come. <laughs> Well, please don't buy ice. I think that's a complete waste of money okay. and everyone's time. That's my public service announcement Thank you very for today. Much. Um, well, we'll crash on with your birthday, shall we? Okay. You're desperate for this. No, I'm not. We've got a, a few little gifts for you. Oh, no, you guys didn't have to. You shouldn't oh, have. Look at this faux modesty. No, please. Oh, don't. Have you got me some gifts? Yes. Can I just say the best gift the day before your birthday is mm. walking into work today, right? And it really puts your feet on the ground. When a load of school kids stop you, had to plant my ear earphones, and they went, "Oh, your friends were the TikTok guy, the posh TikTok guy." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah." They were like, "Oh," and I was like, "Do they want a picture or not?" They were like, "Is he ever around here? We'd love to get a picture." Did of that him. genuinely happen today? Uh, on the way in today, hysterical. And it was quite a posh school. They went, "Your friends were the posh TikTok guy." Three years ago, one national newspaper was calling me the nation's sweetheart. Now look at me. Mm, I'm well. friends with a TikTok guy. Yes. Well, anyway, the TikTok guy's got you some presents. Thank you. Enjoy your 15 minutes while it lasts. It's lonely at the top, trust me. <laughs> oh, have you actually got me a present? <laughs> Do you want to take any of that back? <laughs> this is present number one. Oh, thank you. So describe it for our those that are podcast listeners. Well, it's Minnie the Mouse wrapping paper. <laughs> it's red with white polka dots. It's beautifully wrapped. How have you got it so spot on? Really? I think that's terrible wrapping. Did you do it? I did that very quickly this morning. I think it's beautifully wrapped. Okay. Shall I open it? Yes. Thank you. It's a, it's rectangular and quite thin. It's rectangular and quite thin. Is it an uh, advent calendar? No, it's not an advent calendar. It's, it's... going to change your life. Oh, a defrost tray. <laughs> oh, wow. As, as mentioned in one of our first episodes of the year, it's a meat defrosting tray. So you just put meat on there. And Does it, it in minutes? My sausages thawed out in an hour. What did they actually? Yes. What, uh, it's cold though. How does that work? I don't know. It, but uh, well, maybe because this room is a bit cold. That's really kind of you. That's Thank a you. pleasure. Trust me, change your life. Because sometimes Mike and I, if we haven't defrosted something from the freezer the night before for dinner, the night after, it'll get to about twelve and go. Oh, we haven't defrosted anything. Oh, we'll just have a takeaway. But now that so doesn't matter. Sweet. Thank you. So we're eating a lot healthier. <laughs> oh, don't cry. What? <laughs> Last year I got an air fryer and now I've got a defrost <laughs> tray. I'm old. <laughs> and you're 38. How old are you? I'm 34. What happened to me? I used to be cool. I Look. I, I tried on a heat and chile this week <laughs> as well and I nearly bought it. <laughs> a heat and chile. Not just a chile, a heated one. I had to look at myself in the mirror and thought, oh, even for me, that's too Jordan South. Has Stu told you that Saga have wanted us to do a read for the podcast? Who's Saga? The, Mega uh, Drive. No, that's... Who's Saga? <laughs> Sega. <laughs> Who's Saga? Saga Holidays for the over 50s. Oh, okay. Oh, I'd do that. Yeah. I'd do that. We will, we'll be but doing it at some point. Thank you for my gift. Well, the gifts don't stop oh, there. Oh, there's the more. I give and I give. Here's the next one. A receiver one. here, certain days. Now, mine hasn't yet arrived. It's still being shipped over from the Netherlands. But so you didn't feel left out, we've got you your very own cloak. No! It's not just any old cloak, Jordan. This is a cloak from the traitors. Get away! Is it actually? <gasps> oh, wow! I've actually wanted one of them. That <laughs> is class. So, oh, wow. How do you put it on? Well, that goes over your head. Oh, right. Look at that. <laughs> Stu, get my dressing gown belt. <laughs> this is going to be a good night. <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm actually made up with that. <laughs> I'm actually proper made up with that. You can defrost your meat and murder at the same time. Mm. Do you think I'd be a good traitor? No. Do you not? No. Wait, let me do I my think bit. You, you'd crack under the pressure. Let me do my bit. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit tense. I'm just going to come out and say it. We're, we're murdering that William tonight. He's getting right on my tits. <laughs> we all agreed. Yeah. 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 
Beautiful. Thank you. You'll be oh. you'll you'll be cast in the celebrity version when they inevitably do that. I'm buzzing with that. Good. Well, that is gift number two of three. There's three. There is three. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's nice having a birthday. Three is an oral gift, and by that I mean a u r a l. So of the ear. No, oh, you've not got me in hearing aid, have you? Please, because I will break down. <laughs> I know I need one, but please. Do you? Do you think you should get a hearing aid? I've got one. Do you have a hearing aid? Yes. Sorry, where does this come from? I got one when I was in school. Okay, but you haven't... When did you last wear it? In school. I mean, I've lost it, but I'm meant to well, have one. Well, then you don't have one. Yeah, but I'm meant to wear one. Maybe we could get you an ear trumpet. <laughs> I bought a lot of cartoons. <laughs> yeah. Are they real? <laughs> like an old person. Are they an actual thing? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Jordan North, face of the youth with his ear yeah. trumpet. Sorry, what? <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. Right, this is uh, Skepta. <laughs> no, excuse me. Oh, sorry, you're I Skepta. do Skepta. Um, um, before we do um, gift number three, it is actually, can you believe, halfway through us not having our much-missed esteemed producer Ben. Oh. We've only got half the time left of him being away, and then he's back. Really? Regrettably. And as gift number three, we thought it's only fitting, seeing as you didn't send him any message on his birthday, he is going to send you a message on your birthday. Is he actually? Here is gift number three. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Producer Ben here from my hostel in Colombia. I just thought I'd leave you a little message to make sure that you haven't forgotten about me and also to wish a special someone a special happy birthday. Uh, Jordan, I hope you have a great 28th birthday party. I'm really sorry I can't be there to celebrate with you, but I can assure you I'm not having the best time of my life here. Um, So I wish I was there in the miserable cold with you guys celebrating you turning 28. Um, So far on my trip, I've been enjoying the Caribbean, Colombian coast and all the beaches that it's thrown at me. Um, I've enjoyed everything that Medellin has to offer. Um, And I'm currently in a place called Salento that is very picturesque um, and lovely. And I wish you were all here with me, Um, but obviously you can't be, which is a shame. Um, Up next for me is Machu Picchu. I'll be trekking in what we've now discovered is Peru's rainy season. So we're expecting that to be a bit wet. But we'll laugh through the pain on I'll that one. Anyway, for. <laughs> I'll keep you updated over on my Instagram page. Love you. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks. That was Ben just before he went back to his gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no car- there's no carpets in that hostel, is there? <laughs> no, it sounds like a prison, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's having the time of his life experimenting well, he said he's out not- there. He- he says he's not. He says he's having a miserable. He's not having a good time. No, he was joking. I think he was being sarcastic. Oh, was he? Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, thank you for my birthday gift. I got sent, I don't know if I should do this, um, Chairman Emeritus Stewart, my phone is just behind you on that desk. Um, ben Jeez. and I actually had a, an entire exchange, having not on text. We've messaged each other once. Yeah, well, I haven't <laughs> spoken to Ben a lot. But I, we, so, thank you. Go on, what have you messaged saying? The other day I was sent this fantastic photograph, um, which uh, I will share with you, but we probably shouldn't put on socials. <laughs> He and Kat got sunburned. Have you seen this photo? Um. <laughs> what? <laughs> we are sharing that. We are absolutely... No, I, be- I believe it got forbidden from being shared. No, I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. That is being shared. <laughs> that was on day one. Right. Please, we are sharing that. Show, it- show the room. Show the room. <laughs> It looks like one of those sweets, what they called? <laughs> a flump, not... Fl- a f- no, um, the Mao Wham things. What are they called? Drumstick. Drumstick. It looks like a drumstick. Ben actually, ironically, loves drumsticks. I bought uh, him some for his birthday one year. Yeah, right. We, we're sharing that. Well, maybe we obscure... Have you been messaging loads? No. We oh. just had we, j- we had about half an hour of chatting on Thursday, which oh, was very nice. Oh, that's loads, because all we've messaged each other since the time he's been away is... Oh, he's producer Ben, isn't he? I can't even. I think I've unfollowed him. Oh, um, all's, this is what we've messaged. Hope you're having lots of fun. Thanks, man. <laughs> that's all we've messaged. <laughs> I just replied to one of his stories. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 
Well, there we go. It's nice to, to have a, a check-in on producer Ben. I'm sure when he's back, he'll bore us stiff with all of what he's been up to over the course of his little sabbatical. I can't believe I've got a traitor's cloak. Thanks, guys. Thank you. That's yeah. a pleasure. There's been a lot in the news. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be serious for a minute, but I'm going to have to be. If, if World War Three happens... Well, God help us if you got conscribed. They are talking about bringing back conscription. Would you fight for your country? Well, I'd have to. I'd have no choice. You could work in the officer's mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd make a mess. I... As my friend Luke suggested, I'd probably be an ensor. I beg your pardon. To the entertainment division. Oh, is it? <laughs> the ones, you know, to, to rally the troops, the Vera Lynn of the Oh, you'd be like of twenty twenty. Very on Vera Lynn. Four. Yeah. You'd you'd I mean, how would you fare? I mean, you are an army family. I'd have to conscript I'd be happy. Well, you'd, no, you'd have to. I mean, I'd there's no to. choice. But yeah, I'd be on the front line, I reckon. Would you? Yeah. My um brothers are all talking about it in the family WhatsApp group. Even with your deaf ear? Do you not think oh, you'd get a part, a whole pass? And the colour blindness. Oh, I'd get a pass, wouldn't I? Yeah. I mean, I've got Aquinas gait, which what? means I walk like a horse, so I might be off. But Catering division. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, can you imagine us two in the army together on the front line? <laughs> you getting told off. I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> this trench is absolutely filthy, and I only tidied it two days ago. What is going on here? Oh, you and the army would be great. It'd be like a carry-on film. Well, I may not be the army. I mean, I could be the navy. Could be in the na- yeah, right. Yeah, could be, be could navy. be a marine. You could be. You won't be a marine. Why not? Because they're hard. I can be pretty hard. That's why you would be in the navy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be. I in could the be ar- a submariner. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't be in the RAF because I'm colorblind and scared of flying. <laughs> but I genuinely would if I had to. I'd join the navy. But right. then I'd, I couldn't be on a submarine because I'm claustrophobic. No. You'd be actually pretty... I'd be terrible in the army. Yes. I'd definitely shoot my foot or something. Shoot my own foot. Or let off an hand grenade or... Yeah. Mm. Quick, over the top. Are you genuinely worried? I'm worried that I might... Because I don't know. I need to, What I need to look at is when we last had conscription and national service, what age... Like, what's the cut-off age? Mm. Because I might. I think it's about, it's late 30s. Oh, so I've still got a few years to go. Uh, Yeah. Oh, God help your mum if James, God. I I volunteer as tributes. Don't take my James away, darlings. I volunteer, please. She'll be strapping herself to him. Yes. Oh, God. God forbid. I can't cope if my James goes away. He's on BBC Radio Times Live, baby (laughs) darlings now. You should hear him on BBC Radio Times Live. It's very good. It's only in the mornings and the evenings and the weekends. It's very good. Thank you. I'm lost, losing my way with these impressions. Also, you are. In fact, Freddie uh, texts me. Yeah, he's messaged me as well. He's not happy with his impression. No. He said it needs to be camper, less butch, <laughs> a m- m- bit more Boris Johnson. Oh, he's not Boris Johnson. He said to me when I um, sent it to him, as just to check he was okay, he says, Crikey, he really is a one trick pony when it comes to impressions. <laughs> Cheeky bitch. <laughs> Self shoot Freddy, what's he called? No, that you've, you've combined two people, Viral Freddy. Viral Freddy. Yeah. Self shoot Alex. Yeah, viral. I'm, I'm going to work on his impression. Yeah. I am. Maybe work on all of them once. No, you're there. Freddy's is, Hello, darlings. No, that is That's a totally a like different James, impression. James, isn't it? Yes. Hi, no, hi, that's granny. I'll work on it. I'll work on okay, it. We'll get Freddie on there. Um, have you got us a birthday joke of the week? Uh, sure. Yeah. It's time for Jordan's jolly joke of the week. Here's the jingle. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's jolly joke of the week. Cha cha cha. Okay. Thank you very much. Today I had someone knock on my door asking for small donations towards a local swimming pool. And I'll tell you the punchline after the break. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, it's time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week punchline thing. Today I had someone knock on my door asking for small donations towards a local swimming pool. I gave him a glass of water. <laughs> we are not getting rid of this. I've had so many people text me ones in. I've had so many people tell me that it's 
maybe better if we do something else. Really? Mm. Have you actually? Yeah, what I call my listeners. Where do sheep go on holidays? Barbados. No, it's the Bahamas. Well, You're doing that, you dick. <laughs> Jesus. Shall we um, put you out of your misery? Did you hear about the kid who was born with no eyelids? <laughs> Don't, because I'm going to have to have an operation on my eyelids, so this is sensitive. <laughs> they... Oh, God, this is from Katie. They used his foreskin to create new ones for him. He came out a bit cockeyed, but other than that, they were great. And that's where Jordan's jolly joke of the week ends for this week. Could you do that? What? Use your, like, foreskin as a skin graft. Well, maybe, I don't know. Possibly. Anyway, shall we go on to the listeners' problems, questions and dilemmas? Yes, indeed. This week, they are all Valentine's Day themed. Remember, if you need our help with something, then we'd love it if you got in touch. You can send all your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com. You can DM us, we're at sexandmyboss on socials. Or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards of executive self steel envelopes. He even licks it himself. <laughs> The I don't know, because on... they're self-sealed. Yeah, I, I know. The address is on the website, sexofmyboss.com. This one is from Jen. Hello, William, Jordan, the new EPB, AV Adam, and the rest of the sexted crew. Wow. It's getting so long, isn't it? Yeah. A few years ago, I met someone on Bumble. It's a dating app. I'm aware. And we hit it off very quickly. We arranged a midweek date and planned to go for a few drinks and tacos in Manchester. I arrived a couple of minutes after him, and he had already ordered himself a drink. He then proceeded to drink twice the amount I did the hour before dinner. A red flag waved somewhere far in the distance, but in the interest of being polite, I continued on with the date. We got to the restaurant and he ordered us margaritas. He then said he didn't want to eat, but as he was visibly drunk, I suggested he at least order some chips. Red flag. He shouts across the restaurant to a waitress, clicking his fingers to order food. What a knob. Red flag. People are staring at us as he orders two more cocktails. At this point, I'm embarrassed and excuse myself from the table to go to the restroom and give myself a break from the glares. When I return to the table, I realise my untouched cocktail is half gone. He drank my cocktail whilst I was in the restroom. Big red flag. My question is, my gut was clearly saying that this isn't right and the red flags were waving frantically all night. At what point should you end the date if you're not feeling it and what is the best thing to say? Love the show, Jen. I mean, if it's not going well, Jen, there's a difference between it not going well mm. uh, and you think, oh, these are a bit boring. Uh, but you stick it out to be polite, you know. Yes. It's nice. And they might become a friend. But if someone's being obnoxious... Yeah. And you, if you're ever on a date, feel uncomfortable. Mm. Get yourself out of there. Yep. Just, you, I think in certain situations, and yours is a perfect example, I think it's fine to say, I'm really sorry, but I don't feel very comfortable right now. I think you're actually being quite rude. I'm going to leave and get up and go. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You and don't actually, know this person, so it's fine. Maybe when you moved from the bar to the restaurant and only one red flag had been waved at that point, that was probably the point to go to take a bit of a punt, but to say, uh, do you know what? I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling well. Whatever excuse you need to give, um, it's been lovely. Obviously, it hasn't been, but it's okay to tell a white lie in that instance. Um, I'm gonna go see now. you soon. I'm going to go hand over some cash. And actually, sometimes, although... I wouldn't hand over any cash. I'd let him pay. Well, yeah, but I would, I would... We write about this in the book, but traditionally, if you are on a date and it's not going brilliantly well and you think there's no chance of it happening again, the traditional etiquette, although attitudes are changing, is you just split the bill. Mm. And that was a sign, er, no, it's not happening again. Whereas conventionally, if it was going well, you'd pay on the date. If you were the one that instigated, I'd pay on the next date. And it sort of balances out that way. But if there's no chance of a second date, just split it. But actually having some cash to just to sort of thrust down and go, there we go, there's my half, rather than having to ask for the mm. card machine, work it out, if you can get some cash to uh, whop on the table, I suggest you do. He sounds so uh, he sounds horrible. Awful. And clicking your fingers and shouting at waiters, that would be a no for no. me. If anyone's rude to a waiter, a waitress. Even like. as a, if a friend did that, I would. Yeah. That would be that. Would be that. But uh, just get yourself out of there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you haven't lost anything there other than an evening. This next was from... <laughs> Are you pissed again? Have you got lipstick on as well? No, I do not have lipstick on. Yeah, you on. do. Look at lipstick marks on your... No, I ah. have I have lip, um, lip balm, oh. not lipstick. It's one of my favourite lyrics at... What? Got your lipstick marks still on your coffee cup. Oh, What's that, S Club 7? Take that. Oh, take that. So what were you going to say then? I get on all my videos... I mean, I, you know me. 
from time to time, I've been known to put a little foundation on. Time to time. I wear every type of makeup under the sun. The one makeup I do not wear is lipstick because I've got very naturally ruby red lips. But yet trolls online will go, oh, a guy wearing lipstick. It's like, no, literally, that's not actually the one makeup I'm wearing. So what if you did? Foundation, concealer, all that, yes. Lipstick, no. I know so what if I did, but it annoys me because I'm genuinely not. These days I'm so good at putting makeup on since I've met you. I, I feel like I'm in the theatre. I just do it in two minutes. Well, not always. We do it. We do it before this, before the podcast, because the lights are really bright in the studio. Yeah. But now if I'm, I'm, I'm on the radio and they're like, oh, don't forget we're interviewing so-and-so today because the cameras are going to be on. Mm. I just like get out my little, give myself a little. Quick puff and you're done. Quick puff, quick powder. Yeah, yeah. nice. This yeah. is from E. Dear William and Jordan, a fair few years ago, I started talking to this guy online who seemed really nice. When he asked to meet me one evening in Leeds, I thought, well, why not? Oh, little did flag. I. Little Leeds. <laughs> Don't do my routine. No, I'm doing yours. <laughs> Little did I know, I was in for the worst date of my entire life. I went up life. to a fella in Leeds once. Do you want to wait for me to finish my Sorry. sentence? I just thought of a really funny joke. Okay, well, wait for me to finish my sentence. I said to him, I was needed to, I said, have you, have you got a B&Q in Leeds? He went, no, but we've got two E's. It wasn't that funny. Sorry. I'm really sorry. That was rude. No, it's all right. I laughed. Let's carry on. As I approached our meeting place, I saw him. His eyes and his smile were the same as his pictures, but that's about it. I was my usual polite self and didn't mention anything about that, and we went on for a drink. I thought I would make my excuses after a swift drink. He was perfectly pleasant, conversation was flowing, and so I felt I couldn't refuse his offer when he told me he'd booked a table at a local restaurant. I found myself agreeing, but as the words left my mouth, I thought, oh, FFS, what have you done? We arrived at the restaurant, and the waiter took our order. He ordered spaghetti which I thought was an odd, albeit very confident choice for red a first flag. date. First date. I wouldn't say it's red flag. I, you don't get spaghetti for your first date. If you can eat it beautifully, that's fine. It's all around your chops. Also, don't use spaghetti in Tupperware. What? It make it, afterwards, it goes that same colour as a scouser on a night out. It's like orange, isn't it? <laughs> well, if it's a spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. If it was a spaghetti carbonara, oh, okay, probably yeah. wouldn't. When the spaghetti arrived, he looked at me straight in the eye and said... Just before I start eating, I need to let you know something. I don't know how to use a knife and fork. <laughs> okay, that's a big red flag. What? Well, he might have been um, from Asia where they use... Chopsticks. Chopsticks. Like, if I was on a date in Asia, I'd have to say I don't know how to use chopsticks. Okay. I actually can these days, but anyway. Oh, get you. <laughs> Very sophisticated. Yes. Uh, I looked at him in shock and asked him why. He told me that he had l never learnt how to eat with a knife and fork, but, but instead he ate with his hands. I tentatively started eating my meal, but when I saw the spaghetti slide through his fingers, I made my excuses and went to the restaurant. Jesus. Christ on a bike and the baby Mary Josephine, whatever it is. What the heck was I meant to say to him? How could I get out? I hid for far too long, hoping that when I came out he would have finished and I could quickly make my exit. What would you both have done in that situation? Love you both. E. Now, I, I, I kind of want to say what kind of heathen uses the hands to eat spaghetti, but in other cultures, no. they do use the hands. No, not to eat noodles or spaghetti or anything like they, that. In some cultures, they do. Not to eat noodles or spaghetti. I've Which always, cultures? I've wanted to try that. If I ever went traveling, I'd love to like use the bread that they do. Like, like, well, like, that's India yeah, that's with fine. chapatis and naan for curry. Yeah. That's not for noodles or spaghetti. Okay, so is it never okay to use your hands to eat spaghetti? No. If we have any Asian listeners listening to this that know any different, please let me know. But I'm absolutely fairly confident you do not use your hands to eat noodles, spaghetti, or any sort of long or short form pasta. Why didn't they just use a knife and fork? It's also, it's not difficult. And actually, spaghetti, you only have to use a fork. Right. What would you have done in the situation is what he's asking. So I'm there. We're on a date. Yeah. And I'm eating pescetti with... Um, You're eating what? Spaghetti is what I used to call it when I was younger. So, oh, so cute. Pescetti. Um, it weren't bolognese, it was from tin. But anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm eating spaghetti. Yeah. And then what would you what would you say? So I'm like, I'd say, would you like me to teach you how to use a fork? Is that what you'd say? That's what I'd probably say. Could you have said... Especially me. Could you have said, look, I'm really sorry, it's off-putting. Can I show you how to eat biscuit? That's a really good idea. Can yeah, show you how I'd to use it biscuit? as conversation. How do you do it? Is it all right to twiddle, twirl? Twiddle what? Oh, with a spoon. Freddy, this is your next video. No, we've done this. Oh, have you? Yeah. We've, we've done it, darling. We've done it. <laughs> oh, you silly thought. We've, oh, no, I need to work on Freddy's thing. It's my homework. 
to work on Viral Freddy. Does Freddy need to send you some voice notes for you to copy? Yes, Fred, Freddy, send me some voice notes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't use a spoon. Initially, they don't use a spoon. It's a complete American invention. You yeah. do not use a spoon for spaghetti. You, you just use your fork against the side of the plate. Okay. Right. Well, and you don't cut spaghetti with a knife either, if please, you want to know. Please don't. Yeah. E, oh, you I, don't cut it with a knife? No. Very rude. Can you? Is it all right to snap the spaghetti in half yeah, before you cook it? Yeah, the cook can do that, but you don't Ooh, do that then. I've seen it? stuff on Italy, on TikTok in Italy about that. Italians ate that. Yes, no, no. Italians mm. generally advise you don't do that, but if you are going to break your pasta into two, the cook does it and you don't see it. Apparently Italy's great for Italian food. Yeah, I'm told. Yeah. yeah. If you go there, I was listening to a podcast. There was an actress working out there. Crap for all else. Can't get a decent Chinese out there. Can't get a curry. Can, can't get like a burger or all, it's all Italian. So hang on, the advice we're giving everyone this week is Italy is good for Italian food. Yeah. But right. If you're going to go. Where should I go for a good Spanish? If you're going to go, there's loads of places in London and Manchester and that. If you're going to go to Italy on holiday, just remember it's, it's all Italian food. Because when I go to Spain, to mum and dad. Okay? <laughs> yeah, when I go to well, I think this is good advice. When I go to Spain for mum and dad, so mm. we go to like this tapas bar, we go to this fish place. But then after a week, you, there's other places that do fish and chips. You can get a curry. There's a Chinese down the road from mum and dad. So Spain, I've, I think that's that particular part no, of Spain. No, 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 no. You'd be surprised. If I'm honest, that's in uh, Mahaca. Mahaca, mm, near where they live. Right. Anyway, sorry. Um, e, yeah, I think I would have I would have tried to to teach him as a way of bonding and a way of filling the void. But other than that, yeah, you just just don't order a pudding. And to all our wonderful gene divas, listen now. Bad dates is all part of life. Mm. It's all it's 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 you've got to kiss a few frogs to get your prince. Yes, yes, and you do. Believe me, everyone in this room, we've all kissed a few frogs. Mm. Mm. Well, actually, I don't think I did. Mm. Because I gave a handshake to my my very attractive <laughs> date. And you know oh, this is, again, it's in our book. Right, yeah. next question, please. This is from Laura. Hello, William Jordan and team. I once dated a guy who I thought was my happily ever after. He was absolutely perfect in theory until I realised his weird quirk. He loved to lick me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, Laura, it depends where he's licking you. He would walk past me and lick up my face. <laughs> Along my shoulder, across my arm. <laughs> oh. Not in a sensual sort of way, in a very happy puppy kind of way. It absolutely grossed me out, and I had to stop seeing him. To this day, I cannot stand a tongue anywhere in my direction. <laughs> Shame, Laura. I am now happily married to someone who knows what to do with his tongue. But should I have told the cereal liquor how disgusting his habit was, or was I right to let him and his <laughs> slobbery tongue figure it out for themselves? Happy Valentine's Day, no apostrophe, and thank you for the laughs, Laura. See, Laura, I think of one of those situations. It's the first time you do it. You've got to be firm and put your foot down because this one could have slipped away, literally. <laughs> but it, you, if you'd be like, you could have just, what the fuck are you doing? Don't do that. No bed. You know why you ate that? Well, that's the northern approach. That's how I did First time. But, oh, no, don't. I can't stand that. Yeah. I, stop licking me, you weirdo. We've said it many times before. Communication is key. In any relationship. So I would just go, oh, actually, not not a big fan of that, but not, thanks. Not a big liquor. What do you think I'm a magnum? Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> just can't not own it. You actually buy it into magnums. Do you? Let me, uh, what Calippo. Do you, what do you think I'm a Calippo? There we go. Yeah. That's one you lick. Or do you suck? Do you think I'm an ice pop? <laughs> Let's get there. Which, what do you think I'm a Cornetto? It was yeah. funny at Magnum. We kicked the <laughs> ass out of it. But yeah, I think you just need to say very quickly and very kindly, and you do, as Jordan says, nip it in the bud. You either have the Jordan North approach or you could just say, oh, actually, I'm not, not a big fan of that. Thanks. What's the etiquette of eating licking ice cream? Is there a correct way of doing it? I filmed a video with Viral Freddy on How to Eat, and I decided, I never uploaded it to our shared folder because I decided it was too filthy. No, lick it, please, right, upload that this week. Come on. I'll see if I can find it Please. for you. Or we can put it on our, we'll put it on our socials. No. The video that never was. Please. Right, that's going up. Stu, get on that. Boy. I'm on it, boyo. I'm on it. Hi, boys. Uh, this is another one. This is from Sebastian. I'm loving these. Come on. Hi, boys. Help, I'm accidentally dating someone. How do you accidentally date someone? Anyway, Sebastian continues. I have this friend. Let's call him James. 
James and I have been friends for about a year and we are very close, so it feels like much longer. We talk every day. We live quite far from each other, so most communication is through texting. Recently, James messaged that he's told all his friends about me, his boyfriend. Oh, God. The topic of boyfriends has come up in the past, but it didn't get further than, oh, I'm single too. But James has taken that as a cue that we're in a relationship. I don't know what to do. Do I tell him that we aren't actually dating or just leave it? It feels weird to break up with someone I was never even dating. Sebastian. Uh, uh, Sebastian, I think you need to nip this in the bud, pal. So on, on WhatsApp. I have different advice, but you continue. Get on the message and reply. Go and find a message where he's mentioned the word boyfriend. Just reply to it and just be like, hey, can we talk about this, please? Dot, 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 dot. And then get into the nooks and crannies. Like, I did, I, I don't, I think we need to. Take it a bit slower. We're definitely not boyfriend and boyfriend. We're not in a relationship. Let's just call it there. I would say it's very interesting that Sebastian has not in that letter to us actually said words to the effect of, I do not want to be his boyfriend. Oh, so you think he does? I th- well, he sort of, yes, I completely agree with Sebastian. It's a bit forward if, if you have not officially communicated that you are going to be boyfriends and you are official, exclusive, whatever labels you want to put on it. But Sebastian hasn't said, I don't want to be his boyfriend. I think Sebastian is more put out and maybe it's a bit of an ick and the relationship has taken a few steps back because this other person, supposedly called James, has been very forward. So I again, it's sem- similar advice to the last one. Communication, talk. Two different pieces of advice there, but I think if you don't want to be this person's boyfriend, then do what I said. Reply to that message of like, can we just... Uh... Can we just, what, what's the, uh, did he say on emails? Can we just circle back? Circle back to this. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are I wouldn't use management speak as romance speak. Why not? It's the same. No. Um, but also, Sebastian, I've said this before on our podcast, um, Mikey and I were very good friends before we became boyfriends. We did agree to be boyfriends. We did not, I didn't just slip it in without him knowing <laughs> into a conversation. <laughs> you knew what you were doing. There. And so... Friendship, it's turned out beautifully. We're now married. Being very close friends is a very good basis. I forget for... you're married. Do you, yeah, do you? of course you're married. You were so Shit. pissed at the wedding. Pardon? <laughs> it's because you were so pissed at I the wedding. I weren't, eh? Hey. Most people were. No, you sound like you're disappointed in the guests. No, the I'm wedding. not at all. I know there was a blazer in one of the toilets. Yeah, there was that and there was other stuff. Jesus. See what I mean? It might yeah. have been at Claridge's, but it could as well have been in Burnley. <laughs> There was no fights, though. Anyway, do one more quickly. I'm liking okay. all the Valentine's uh, Day ones. This is an anonymous one. Hello, William and Jordan. I've been talking to a guy for a few months, and we had exchanged several flirty messages with each other. Eventually, we decided to meet up in person and take things to the bedroom. Go on. On several occasions, we engaged, we engaged in some subpar coitus. Okay. However, I did notice on all occasions that he never seemed to pull his trousers down below his mid-thigh or take them off. It wasn't until a few weeks later when I was speaking with my father that I realised the issue. Sorry, talking to your father about... I mean... I think it might have clicked. What? Oh, she was telling... They were telling... She was just having a chat with her dad about, oh, yeah, there's this guy, or he or her, I don't know actually how they identify. Okay. It turns out my dad knew of him and his family. My father was also aware that we had been spending time together, and so one Sunday over a roast he randomly said... Did you know that, name of person, only has one leg? Oh, was he hiding his leg? Trying not to choke on my roast chicken. (laughs) I stopped in shock and tried to process this this information. It all became clear as to why I've never seen anything below the thigh. After finding out this information, the casual relationship slowly fizzled out, not because of the information I'd been made aware of, but instead because I was sad that we reached a certain level of intimacy without him being able to open up to me about such a major part of his life. Oh, that's really sad. A lot of my friends found it very strange that he hadn't disclosed this to me, and I couldn't help but feel embarrassed for not noticing. I often question whether I should have attempted to race this with him or whether or not I was right in thinking I had a right to know this. Kind regards, anonymous. He was obviously self-conscious. Yeah. Yeah. I, feel I mean, we've bad. all got parts of our bodies that we all might feel self-conscious of. So hiding things is sort of fairly standard. Oh, but... tell me about it. I'm, I'm doing this class at the moment every Sunday. And you've got to put the... Um... Dressing gown? No, oh. the like heart monitor around your belly. Right. Yeah. Mine weren't working. Does it fit? So this woman stopped the whole class. This mm. other guy come in 
from the <laughs> from reception because it's like keeps your heart rate and your calories. Lifted my top up and they're both like playing with my. And what were they playing with? My this thing around my belly and everyone's watching it. I'm oh, so dear. very conscious. Oh, life's so hard, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, Jordan has proved that we all have parts of our bodies that we're not sort of brilliantly happy with. Um, I agree with Anonymous. It is, I can I can see why. If actually, you know, when you get to an intimate stage with someone, um, you want to feel that actually, yes, you are, you know, intimate in in everything but the coital department coital. as well, the sex bit. I mean, yeah, you've had a heart to heart. I wouldn't feel bad about it. Um, I'd try not to, but it, it, maybe if. The situation went on. You could have said, oh, I'm not bothered about you having one leg, by the way. Mm. Was that the right way to say it? It's your third leg I'm more interested hey! in. Or second leg, I guess, in yeah. this instance. But I would maybe send them a message. Go for, go for dinner, go for drinks, just chat, get to know them again on that level before anything else potentially reignites. Yeah. That would be my suggestion. Should have got our brads to help us with this one, yes. shouldn't we? He's yeah. got one leg. He's only got one leg. Yeah. He's not lost it lately. He's a dad now, so he's very much grown up. Oh, good. He could also, I was thinking, because I just put some on my suitcases, he could air tag his leg. You know those lapel devices? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so if he does lose it again. No, it's more bother when he goes away and forgets to take his charger. Then he's absolutely screwed. Mm. Yeah, a little bit than that. Anyway, should we wrap up? Yes, that's lovely. Thank you very much for all of those romantic questions and dilemmas. And remember, you can listen and watch every Tuesday and Friday. And to finish this episode, William's going to leave us out with his special happy birthday song for me. <clears throat> Am I? The one you always send me on my birthday. That's private. Oh, okay. Do you want to do a love-themed one? A love-themed one. It must be love. No, uh, love is in the air. Every, every time, time I look, look around... around. No, I'll tell you what we'll sing. We'll sing Dixon Dallas. We'll see you on Friday. <laughs>